So I just wanted to do a quick video just now, uh, just to explain something. Uh, doctors are not prescribing Ritalin or methamphetamine hydrochloride and prescribing other medications for a reason. The reason might shock you. The reason is money. Because Ritalin is quite an expensive medication for them to prescribe simply because of how much they have to pay for it and how much we pay for our prescriptions in the UK. In Scotland we don't pay for our prescriptions but uh, it's quite an expensive medication for them to prescribe and they're very, they're very against prescribing it, especially the uh, instant release one because it can be sold on the street as speed and it's pure speed basically. So a gram of that is probably worth about a hundred pound on the street, you know? So it's, it's a very, it's a very awkward situation that they're put in. It's expensive for them to prescribe and it can be sold illegally, you know? So they're not, they're not likely to give it to you. They have given it to me, but I, I kind of fought for it. I kind of told them straight up, you know, this is the medication that I believe will help me. This is the medication I want. You know, I'm sick of, I'm sick of playing these games, you know, like, so I, I specifically told them basically, you know, like, I told them straight up, like, you either give me this medication or, or, or I'm checking out. I'm not going to continue with this anymore. And by checking out, I mean, like, committing suicide. So I wasn't willing to fight it anymore. You know, I was diagnosed when I was 11. Then I was diagnosed again when I was 20, 37. And in between that whole time, I was just, it was just torture. Uh, well, ever since I was born, it was torture. But uh, it was, it's just a nightmare. You know, it's a nightmare to go through that you're almost trapped in your own mind you know you're almost trapped in your own thoughts and you can't ever seem to escape and uh, the most effective medication is probably the most addictive it's the most like saleable one if you to sell it on the street and it's the most expensive for them to prescribe so you know you've got to kind of prove to them that you're not going to go uh, go out and just kind of sell it you know I don't have any addictive personalities uh, addictive traits you know so I'm not addicted to weed or alcohol or any of that kind of stuff you know I don't have an addictive personality that way uh, in terms of substance abuse so I, 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 I they give it to me quite readily and I manage it fine you know I don't take too many days of it and then I take a few days off because it's the instant release one I can take the days off if I want to uh, if it's not the instant release one, it's a prolonged release one that builds up in your system over time, and then and then it, it, it helps you. I, I, that's I just I couldn't I couldn't regiment myself to that every day, you know. So I don't I don't bother with that. And the other types of medication, I, I don't believe are effective. They they have heart. You have you end up having heart problems. You know, panic attacks. You know, like uh, you end up with. Uh, eating disorders and stuff you know so there's a lot of different things that go on with these kinds of medication and you have to just you have to just tell them straight look give me methamphetamide hydrochloride ritalin in other words because that's the best one i know that's the best one because everybody says it's the best one everybody that's on it always says oh that's the best one you know and don't take the prolonged release one take the instant release one because if you take the instant release one then what happens is you take it for like five days and then take two days off. And what I normally do is I normally take five days, take four days off and then take five days. So what I'm doing is effectively I'm taking like five days on, four days off, five days on, you know, and sometimes I only take it for four days. It depends on what I have planned for that day, whether or not I'm going to take it or not. You know, like today, pardon me, but today I'm not actually on it. And it's half ten and I'm still in my bed. I am getting up. I'm on the process of getting up. I don't know if you can notice I'm dressed, but uh, me and my dad are going to go to the shooting club uh, because I like to go shooting. I'm a, I'm a veteran, so I like to go and, you know, shoot targets, clay pigeons, whatever, you know. I, I like to go and do th things like that. Because of my medical condition, my father has to be there to sign me in as a guest. 
you know, I fired if, you know, if every weapon under the fricking sun. But yeah, I was in a parachute regiment, so I've I've fired a lot of things, and they still won't let me. They still won't let me like carry a shotgun myself, you know. Which I don't really blame them because too many lunatics have went off the off the deep end and started shooting everybody. So there is that aspect of uh, mental illness. Although I don't think they were suffering from ADHD or had anything on the autism spectrum, you know. Uh, when I was 37, I got my medication. I didn't get it when I was 11. But I have noticed a huge impact in, you know, like what I'm able to do and how I'm able to operate. And it is a bit, it, it's beneficial for a lot of things. It does cause a little bit of anxiety. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it kind of spikes my anxiety a little bit. But they give me sleeping tablets at night time. So if I'm on like a, a two in the morning, two in the afternoon, then I know I'm not going to sleep. I know I'm going to be awake quite a lot, you know. So I take a sleeping tablet at night time and I'm out, you know. So... There is certain aspects of it that aren't so great, and I'm not going to lie to you, but the benefits outweigh the negatives, and and the and the and the things that it takes away, the things that it eliminates. I couldn't I couldn't go back to that. I couldn't go back to that incoherent uh, thought patterns, and I couldn't go back to that, you know, impulsive behaviour, and I, I just couldn't go back to it, you know, and and. In a way, like when I take my my days off and I'm resting, I'm lazy, lazing about doing nothing. I'm kind of back. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm kind of back in that mindset, but at the same time, like I know that the medication is there. I know that I can take it if I need it, and I know that within forty five minutes it will be it will be in me. It'll, it'll, it'll be affecting me in a positive way. But just thought I'd make that little there. Uh, that little message there because some people have been asking about medication and about what it does to people and what it does to you in terms of, you know, that kind of thing. You know, I don't know if you can, oh my God, my eyes are so dark. This is what happens when you have ADHD and you don't take your medication and you lie in bed from last night about 11 o'clock until half 10 today. It's like 11 hours. This is, your face looks terrible. You know, but then I'm up. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell I'm not on my medication. But anyway, have a good day. Uh, see you all later. And if there's any other questions anybody wants to know, just, just drop me a message, you know, because I'm quite open about things.